గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ ఎవ్రీవన్ అందరికీ నమస్కారం మై నేమ్ ఈజ్ అనురాధ తోటా ఐఎమ్ ఎ టెక్నాలజిస్ట్ అండ్ అన్ ఆంటర్ప్రీనర్ ఐ ఎనేబుల్ డ్రీమ్స్ ఆఫ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ అండ్ పేరెంట్స్ ఐ స్ట్రాంగ్లీ బిలీవ్ దట్ ఎవ్రీ స్టూడెంట్ హ్యాస్ దిస్ రైట్ ఫర్ ఎమినెంట్ ఆపర్చునిటీస్ అండ్ వర్ల్డ్ క్లాస్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ what do you what you see here is one of those more than 1000 seminars that i give to students from tier 2 and tier 3 cities most of the students from tier 2 and tier 3 cities in andhra pradesh and telangana know me but if you are an iit and probably you wouldn't know me and that makes me uh, that leads me to believe that even iit students do not get to see best <laughs> so <laughs> jokes apart that's what entrepreneurs believe entrepreneurs believe that they are the best and they give, can give the best solutions they can move the mountains and only they can move the mountains that's what they believe so entrepreneurship and i actually we are somewhat same i am 50 but i behave like 20 even entrepreneurship is like that entrepreneurship and anuradha or any other entrepreneur we are old but we try to fit in the new generation with all the generations that followed us we try to fit in with them try to understand where we can fit in try to cope up try to grapple so how is that i am able to be relevant across so many generations i've been relevant all across and i'm still relevant how am i able to be so relevant across so i trust the power of middle class values for this why i do it why do i trust po power of middle class values you have to know a little bit about me i was born in hyderabad my dad is uh, a banker and i learned lot of discipline from him but what i have to tell you is more about about my mom most of us learn from moms so my mom she has discontinued her mbbs in the last leg she didn't complete her house surgeon activity that she has to do but she didn't stop there she went on to become you know an area called sanatnagar in hyderabad she went on to become most beloved teacher garu of sanatnagar there are around 50000 households and it's not exaggeration if i say 50% of the households would know her what's her speciality that so many people know her her speciality is whenever there is a child who is not able to cope up with academics who is failing her speciality is she'll make them pass the parents used to bring them whether be lkg 10th class intermediate or graduation she used to be she used to make them pass so what i have found looking back is that i also used to teach pe people who are in higher classes than me and i teach i taught in my own uh, where i did my graduation i was teaching my, the first years chemistry and the students used to wait for me the college paid me in fact for that and later also very recently when we had this 10th class uh, reunion one of the girls the girl is also 50 and she came to me and she told that she was she passed 10th class and went on to become teacher because i don't remember but i taught her maths so looking back i think like my uh, speciality my speciality has been explaining very well in the best possible way and about my career i had my first baby when i was in college looking back i think it was traumatic for my classmates to see me 9 months pregnant classmate and i remember very clearly that students in the college you know when i walked in the corridor or climbed stairs the college used to go to stand still people used to just stand there out of fear i'm very sorry to all my classmates and college mates about that but after that i i uh, joined bank and then state bank and then joined number of multinationals most of the multinationals that usually it people join so i joined these multinationals i went to us i went to uk and then i came back i did my mba from isb and post that i i worked as a ceo for an it organization and then started my own in 2013 and i've been relevant all these years 
And I am a successful entrepreneur today. I call myself successful. I am reasonably, uh, I have met the goals that I've set for myself. And wait, what, what do I do? It's not working. Okay. So um, there are around 3.5 crore technology students, do you believe in India? If you go to AICT uh, site, 3.5 crores technology students in India. And most of the studies say that there are only 15% students who are employable. And common sense will say these 15% students are either from cities, tier one cities, or from very good colleges from tier two cities. That's it. So it is gross injustice that opportunities are not available to most of these students. And this is my main aim, that I want to take these eminent opportunities and world-class education to the students across the country, wherever they are. And how did I start? I just started with a laptop. I didn't have any, we are not from a business family, so I didn't have much uh, capital to start with. I just started with laptop. But I'm able to be reasonably successful. My mission is quite big actually massive to reach out to all these students. So again, coming to the question, how am I relevant and how am I able to do? I attribute and where is the money? I attribute to my middle class values. I didn't start my dream or my life that I have to be very good at edtech. I have to start something which is, which is the best in edtech. I didn't start like that. I just, I don't even have money as I said. What I have is a very good heart which responds, which responds when I see a student who is bright but not able to access good opportunities. I feel sad for that because if he didn't res uh, access opportunities at that age, he will never access opportunities for the rest of the life. At the same time, even if I see a patient who is not able to access good uh, medical support, I feel sad, but why did I choose EdTech? There are so many things that you can feel sad about when you look around, but why did I choose EdTech? Looking back, I didn't plan for it. What I can just say is, every household has exclusive intelligence. What I got from my mom is this exclusive intelligence. It is not, you can't decode it. It is some unwritten code and you can't decipher that code. Every family has some intelligence. For example, there is one hire in, uh, in, in my organization who has completed his intermediate. He has done something called Photoshop, done a training on Photoshop, and he joined us as designer. I have to tell the designs were pathetic. But one fine day, I had a need that he, uh, somebody has to speak in Telugu with my potential customers. And this guy, uh, I'd asked him to speak to the, all these potential customers. By evening, he has converted all of them into customers. The first question I asked him is, what is your dad? And he has mentioned they had a sari shop. And what this young lad has picked up is sales. And that is why every household has that exclusive intelligence. So whatever you study, whether it be engineering or in engineering, it is software or metallurgy or whatever it is, whatever you study, combine it with your what I call family intelligence and you'll make wonders. Especially in India, you'll make wonders. Why in India you'll make wonders? Because in all the diversity that India has, there is one common thread across and that common thread is middle class value system. There is definitely middle class value system, even with Ambani. He has a middle class value system, probably his children might not be having, but middle class value system exists in the country across in the mines. So in this uh, middle class uh, value system, what happened is with the middle class value system is, most of them refer to middle class value system or middle class mentality with a very negative connotation. There is inherently some problem with this middle class value system is what people say. You have to change in order to succeed is what they, people say. 
I went to ISB, I was taught finance, marketing, strategy and everything. If somebody has said, all the speakers or researchers or, or intellectuals have said that you will have to change your value system in order to be successful. So I've been taught everything, but who gave me the new value system that I have to follow? There is no new value system. They just criticize the middle class value system. Right, so nobody gives us that. And so that is the reason I'm here today to tell you that middle class value system needs a defense. I am the legal lawyer person who, is, who stands here defending the middle class value system for success. So the first casualty or the first thing that when you say middle class value system is flawed is char lo kya kahenge. There were so many comedy shows and in every, every place they say, okay, don't, don't worry about the society, you go on free will. What I think is, whatever society that we hate, that brings us the much required discipline, keeps us morality, keeps our morality intact, and helps you avoid distractions. And more so, it creates a fear of failure. Fear of failure you should have. You should have fear of failure for success. Most of them say, though, you don't have. No fear of failure you should have. And you thought, did you think that I had an option to leave my venture and say, no, this is not working for me. I didn't have an option. Because my mom had a favorite poem in Telugu. And this is the favorite poem. Her favorite poem, since uh, I was a child, is Pattu Patta Radu. This is in Telugu. Patti Vidava Radu. Patti Neni Bigiya Patta Valanu. Patti Iduchita Kanna. Padi Chachuta Melu Viswadabhi Rama Vinuravema. This means that you need not take everything seriously. This loosely translates to, you don't need, need to take, take everything seriously. But if you take seriously, then don't, don't leave it. In your, if you have to leave it, then you better die. That is what it means. So I never had this option of saying, this is not working for me. The second important one everybody says is not right is complacence. Why is complacence? Complacence, they say, complacence meaning uh, you will have to agree to somebody even if you don't like, but still willingly. This is taught in all the households. To your chacha or to your mama, to, to anybody of the elders, you just have to listen and do what they say. You will have to please them. And this complacence is, people say if you are co complying, then you are weak and living on free will is strong. No, it is not. Complacence, complacence will help you think from multiple angles. It helps me think from the student angle. It helps me think from, uh, from the parent angle. It helps me think from the investor angle. It is nothing but emotional intelligence. You don't need to especially go through lots of books for emotional intelligence. This is how you are taught in your household how to use your emotional intelligence. And the next comes, stand by your word. Everybody knows the story of Harishchandra. And everybody knows the story of the cow that comes back to the tiger after leaving its, leaving its child because it has given the word to the tiger that it will come back. We all know this story. These stories are told as if they are foolishness today. They are not. Whenever I thought I'm not able to take it forward or whenever I thought I have to give up, then I think what happens to that student who trusted me? What happens to that college which trusted me? I think about them. And standing by your word is very important. Next, family. So for me, family or community. For me, it is family. It is true that most of the time, first two years or so, you are an entrepreneur. Your parents wouldn't like it. There will be so many people who will say, no, this doesn't happen to you. But once they see, once they see your grit and persistence, they're all with you. My daughter, she has resigned a very high paying salary and she is working for 30% of her drawn salary just to keep this, um, take, take this to the next level. My husband's dream is my dream. He also, has, he also shares the dream of making my organization really big. So the family is always with you. And for you, it can be your friends, it can be a small community. 
if you have watched the movie Joker, I couldn't relate to one fr frame of Joker. That's because in India, nobody will allow a family to, to be like that, the mom and the son. They will always hit you from the back, saying, no, no, this doesn't work. The charlog will not allow you to fail. Okay, they always say, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. They come to support. Okay, so community is very important. And another one they always ask us to ask us is grow silently, do not boast. Did you ever hear of Kimatrai Gupta? Kimatrai Gupta has started his life uh, in a shop, in an electrical shop of his mama. And then on he, he has built Havels, which is so huge. 2022 financial year ended with 1500 billion rupees in sales, in revenues. Did you hear of him? And from the time he started till today, he is old, he is expired. So till, till, this, till this time of this picture, it takes so much time to build a sustainable, long-lasting organization. We never heard of him. Compare and contrast with the unicorns that we have today. And these are all Bahar, Sherwani, Andar, Pareshani. They have 5,000 crores loss and always grappling for funds. That's not how we build sustainable, long-lasting organizations. Sustainable, long-lasting organizations require you to build step by step for a long time. So build small. All these things, the importance given to education, your manners, honesty, discipline, the financial discipline that they are forcing on you will really give you a lot of strength, will form your real personality. And uh, Confucius has said, everything has beauty, not everyone sees it. This is true. We are not able to see the beauty of the middle class mentality or middle class values. And once, in, after three years I started my organization, I was in shambles. I, I was weeping inconsolably on the lap of my 13 year old son. And I told him, I think Vivekananda told wrong. He asked us to work hard. He asked us to actually work incessantly. Work hard incessantly. I think that's not how success comes. He said with his 13 year old mind, what he said is, I think what he told is not wrong. What you interpreted is wrong. So that is true. We are all interpreting middle class mentality as wrong. And I started small, and everybody has to start small, build a sustainable business. And there will come one moment, one opportunity, one situation that will make it big. And we call this lifestyle entrepreneurs. Start small, and first sustain yourself. First sustain your lifestyle. And then start expanding. A day comes when it will become really big. So let us encourage the becoming of lifestyle entrepreneurs from students and see how the new India unveils. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you.